Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm America Girl 24, and today I'm going to be playing Monster Road Trip, the demo version. Uh, this is set to release in late 2022, so I'll be looking forward to that. But the demo just got released today, so of course we have to jump into it. Um, this game is um, similar to Monster Prom and Monster Prom 2, but um, yeah, this time we're out on the road. So let's go ahead and see what it's all about. All right, so we got one player here. Looks like we can play up to four with four players like usual. So that's pretty sweet. All right, on the road again. Ah, it's you. Welcome to Monster Road Trip. Get ready for a demo of a game that is its own beast. Unlike our previous games, this is not a dating sim. Oh, OK. Although the final game will include dating mechanics. This is a multiplayer narrative survival adventure. What a mouthful, huh? Don't fret. For the very first time, we're adding tutorials to the game from the very start. You can skip them once you got the gist, but believe me, it might be useful to check them out at least once. You'll ride alongside Polly and Scott, uh, but be sure this game is filled with all sorts of characters you'll see some new faces and few old friends. Please feel free to take screenshots and share them with your friends on social media. And come discuss the demo in our Discord server. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Sounds good. Dude, the narrator really like soaking in the rays here. Dig. I know in the past games you could date him. I never had the opportunity to. <laughs> But maybe this is our chance. Um, <laughs> and that's all. We wish you the best. Thank you for your support. We hope you enjoy this weird little demo we prepared for you. Good luck on the road. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. All right, so we are playing as green here. Polly, I've been meaning to ask you, how how do you road trip? No shame in asking, Scott. Let me tell you how to road trip. It's easier than it seems. To road trip, you need two things, a car and a road. We have those. Yes, we do. Now, after the famous double choice infrastructure bill was passed in 1974, all roads are required to lead you to two different locations. So what uh, you do is drive down the road and choose a place to stop from the two legally required options. Come on, Green, show Scott how it's done. All right, so looks like we have two choices here. We have the shopping mall, hanging in shopping malls. The eight is our back, baby. All right, so it looks like this will refill one of these resources up here. So we have Hype, Magic, Mind, Money, Soul, and Stamina. The mall looks like it's going to affect Stamina. And then what's this? Roadside Wig... <gasps> no, Roadside Wig Museum, a museum full of uh, Kapler Wonders. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we could either probably lose money here or what is this one? get the hype we have to we literally who would pass up a wig museum let's go <laughs> polly can i stick my head out of the car <laughs> scott this is a convertible your head is already out of the car oh gosh oh scott <laughs> whoa <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at this artwork. Oh my God, it looks amazing. Wigs of every color, shape, and style from Afro to updo are displayed here. You never knew there was such a rich history to artificial hair. There's plenty of things to check out at the museum. You decide to, let's see, ooh, roadside wig museum. There's so much to do. Let's do all of the things. Wait, although locations have a lot of things to do, namely three, we can't do all of them. We'd be on the road forever. To avoid this, our road trip contract established that we should do one action per location we visit. Oh, right, we can't break the road trip contract. And never forget, on this road trip, there are some key resources that keep us all afloat. Money, stamina, magic, hype, mind, and soul. All important things uh, we all share, uh, we're all sharing when we're on the road. All right. Our choices can have consequences on these resources and that will affect everyone. Look at Scott's face. <laughs> if one of these completely, oh, if one of them depletes completely, we can kiss this road trip goodbye. <gasps> Oh no, usually I definitely lose all of my stuff. So this is gonna be kind of tricky to like make sure we don't reach zero. Okay, I'll do my best to be a good boy. Come on, let's start by picking an action. All right, so here at the Roadside Wig Museum, we can either check out the uh, exhibit, we can attend the kids tour, <laughs> or we can visit the gift shop. So should we get some hype? Um, um, <laughs> let's do it. I guess we're gonna attend the kids tour. <laughs> Uh, okay, you and your friends attend the kids tour instead of, you know, checking out any of the more age appropriate options at the museum. Don't judge me. <laughs> Hiya, kids, says the tour guide. Today we're learning about the wonderful world of wigs. If you answer my questions right during our tour, you'll get a gold star. Woohoo, gold stars. I love positive reinforcement that makes me feel smart. <laughs> Look at this wig. It's an Egyptian pharaoh's wig from thousands of years ago. Does anyone know why the Egyptians wore wigs? To avoid sunburns, insect bites, and male pattern baldness. Says it right there on the sign, dum-dum. Man, this competition is easy. 
It isn't a competition, but fine. Here's your gold star. <laughs> now, look at this wig, kids. It's worn by a judge in the UK. Can anyone tell me the fastest way to become a judge in the UK? Me, me, me. The fastest way to be a judge is to steal another man's powdered wig. Give me my stars. <laughs> oh, Scott. The tour continues. Polly and Scott rack up stars. By the last exhibit, they're tired with another participant. Oh, oh tied, sorry. Little Bobby. Little effin' Bobby. Scott, we gotta take that whiz kid down if we want the grand prize. And that's the end of the tour, says the guide. Aren't wigs fascinating, kids? Who knows what wigs will be like in the future? Pick me, pick me. I think wigs will, uh... Give people the ability to understand poetry. Oh, gosh. Shut up, you two. The guide snaps. The tour is over. It was just a rhetorical question anyway. <laughs> a rhetorical what? Question? Rhetorical, which means this question is worth double points. Green, help us answer the question right and kick Bobby's uh, diapered butt. <laughs> You don't know the answer because there is no answer, but there are other ways to eliminate Bobby from the competition. Oh, this is literally a child. Plant some drugs in Bobby's pockets and frame him for doping uh, for this competition. Oh my God. Bribe Bobby with the one thing his parents and the law have denied him all these years. A taxi license? What? Um, this, these are both very bad. These are, I mean, he can't necessarily use this, right? I mean, I don't, I feel so bad about the drugs. Okay, we're going to give him a taxi license. Hey, great idea. It's a good thing we found that website that lets you buy unregulated taxi licenses at ridiculous, ridiculously cheap price. You spend negative three money or you spend three money and bribe Bobby with a taxi license. He asks his parents to quit the tour as his only desire now is to pursue this new career. Let's go. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. This might be instant regret. Later on the mean streets of New York City. Oh, honey, please hurry. Call a cab. The baby is almost here. Look, here's one now, cabby. Hurry to the closest hospital. My wife is in labor. Oh God. Wow, we. What's a uh, oops? Obstacle? Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh God! Wait, is that taxi driver a toddler? How does he even reach the pedals? I'm the best taxi driver ever. Room, room. <laughs> He's not even driving. He's just making motor noises. Honey, we need to get out and find a new. There's no time. He said he's a good driver. Oh my God! She's literally going for it. Yeah, uh, he even made the vroom vroom sounds and now, oh, more contractions. The city council keeps sending Bobby letters, begging him to stop driving a taxi. Little do they know, Bobby can't read. But this summer, little Bobby will learn where babies come from <gasps> the hard way. What is going on? Taxi Bobby. Bobby goes vroom vroom. It comes soon to a theater new you. Pre-order your tickets now for plus two hype voucher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that was chaos all right i gotta watch my money we're already down to three so i gotta be careful here so we've got the diner order something if you dare oh doom's diner oh god that sounds dangerous or ranch ready to embrace your inner horse girl <laughs> That's everything. All right, well, let's go over here. There's nothing about money so far, so maybe we'll be okay. Oh my gosh, bros, the winds on my face makes me feel alive. Oh my gosh, dude, rude. <laughs> oh yeah, Polly's dead. She's a poltergeist, so that's that's why it's rude. <laughs> um, let's see, you read about this diner in a listicle? Did I say that right? <laughs> of the top 10 most cursed restaurants <gasps> you should never visit? Why did nobody mention this previously? Obviously, you took that as a challenge. Seriously, after all the dark magic you've messed with over the years, you'd think you can handle a diner. So now that you're here, what do you do? All right, let's see. Let's choose an action to make an event happen. I'm ready for all the randomness of these events carry. Actually, Polly, I was checking this guide and it says every potential action comes with useful signs. Oh, really? I thought it was all random. Like that was okay with me. Utter chaos suits me. No, look, the different signs signify different types of events. Let's see here. Most of them are guest events. In this, you'll always lose a resource and gain a resource. It says, uh, oh, it says it's all about finding balance. Sometimes your choice will determine which resource you'll gain well, you always lose the same resource, or sometimes it's the opposite. You must guess what resource you'll lose and the resource you gain is fixed. Interesting. Let's see, that's not so bad. If we know we're, what we're losing or gaining, the resource is unavoidable. We may uh, dodge messing up big time. <laughs> But sometimes you got to guess both. And finally, uh, quantities. These events have always three choices that affect our resources. Okay. But the difference is that each choice affects the resource uh, by three different degrees, a bit, somewhat, or a whole lot. 
Oh my gosh, that's kind of a lot to take in. I kind of hope I remember this while making choices, but we'll try. <laughs> Okay, so they're gonna leave the tr uh, decision making up to me as always. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, um, so we can use the jukebox. We can order something or look for a booth. Ooh, okay, so what is this gonna affect? So we've got hype, we've got stamina, or we have mind. How are we doing on all of this right now? So let's see, hype we have a ton of. Uh, let's see, uh, stamina we're okay with. And then mind is the same as stamina, so maybe... I don't know if I want to order something if this place is haunted. Like, what if it's poison or something? Let's look for a booth, I guess. <laughs> you and our friends enter the diner. Your heart is full of hope. And if this uh, meal goes your way, it'll soon be full of cholesterol, too. Welcome to Doom's Diner. <gasps> Whoa, Gerard. Oh, my gosh. They are spooky. Uh, let's see. We've been in the business of misery. Oh, my God. A little pair more reference uh, since 1952. How may I help you? <laughs> Our group size booth, please. Oh, one group size booth, please. Can you bring us three extra bottles of ketchup, too? I like ketchup as my appetizer, and Paul, Polly keeps the rest in plastic baggies to throw out cars on the highway. Don't care. Didn't ask. It's uh, dead as a Morgan here, so you guys can sit wherever you want. Tight. You head for the closest booth. Green, are you crazy? We can't just pick any old booth like that. Picking a diner booth is massively important. You got to think about the jukebox proximity, drafts in the building, lingering bad vibes. It's like that time coach said, <laughs> if one day you find yourself in someone else's flashback, make sure to be of assistance by providing a wise and useful piece of advice. I don't know what that means, but it felt appropriate to say here. <laughs> you don't know. You could do without the uh, convoluted booth tactics or the weird meta advice you just wanted a burger i can see that you're skeptical boo so how about i afford uh, force you to do this my way until i see until you see i was right let's go booth hunting fine if it's that important to them you start searching uh, the diner for the ideal place to sit Something strange starts to happen. No matter how much you walk, the surroundings keep repeating, as if the diner was the background of an old cartoon. Minutes become hours. You're still walking. Booths and neon signs become reminders of your venture uh, into an escapable 50s-themed nightmare full of, grease, full of grease and despair. All right, guys, we're lost. I know when I'm beat, but let's be adults here and avoid looking for someone to blame, okay? <laughs> Polly. Polly's the one to blame. Literally, yes. But that's not important. The important thing here is uh, being the person to thank once you lead your friends out of this diner. All right. Make a blood sacrifice to the diner god for assistance or hire a diner Sherpa to guide you. Oh, my God. All right. We're going to lose money if we probably do this. So I'm going to have to make a sacrifice. All right. We only got three bucks left. So it's all or nothing here. No time to lose. You stab yourself in the leg to get some of that sweet, sacrificial blood. Green, you seriously need to stop solving all of your problems with blood sacrifices. You can only offer so much blood. I like when he does uh, the chanting part, though. It's sort of soothing. Yes, exactly. The chanting. Here he goes again. I'm telling you, if you're not keeping all of that blood, we could at least be doing uh, way funnier things with it. Polly is eye rolling while Scott hums in sync with your chants. And is he dipping a fry into your blood? Fools, do they not appreciate your sacrifice? The diner god will surely forgive their lack of faith when he sees your bountiful offering. What's happening? Why are you bleeding everywhere? You're not allowed to bring outside blood in. We're trying to run a business here. The diner god, he has come. You throw yourself at his feet, begging for assistance and finding the booth most holy. Don't mind green. He's just blood loss. Uh, oh, it's just blood loss hallucinations. This happens a lot. Uh, if I show you guys the exit and give you some free burgers, will you get out of here? All glory to the diner god's bundleness, uh, bountiless kindness. Uh, you get out, which gives you plus two mind as if you escape the diner maze, but you lose stamina um, from your blood loss. Oh, geez. Okay, so I'm getting low on money and stamina now. Of course, story of my life. Ooh, what's this though? Okay, so we have a futuristic gas station, the transportation of the future today, or a regular motel, the backbone of any road trip experience. <sighs> Um, okay, this shows me loss of money and gain of hype, I think. Is that what that is? Oh, no, magic. Um, and this, oh, no. Oh, God. I mean, if we get stamina, we can maybe rest, but we might be broke. I don't know. Let's go to the motel. <laughs> Look, that cloud looks like a plane. Scott, that is a plane. <laughs> 
All right. After a long, exhausting day of sitting in your car, you're ready to turn in for the night. Time to choose which mundane activity you'll do before sleeping. Surely Polly and Scott will find a way to make it weird. All right, so we can watch some TV, we can order some pizza, or we can get ready for bed. Ooh. <gasps> I mean, this will affect everything a little bit. Do we want to do that instead of just like one resource? Oh, oh, I'm nervous. Okay, let's do it. You claim your mattress and start preparing to go to bed. As you're deciding which of your onesies makes you look... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm, uh, yes. <laughs> You hear Scott and Polly uh, giggling in the bathroom. You go investigate. Hey there, Green. Scott and I are doing our nightly skincare routine. Care to join us? Oh, surely. But before you can rejoice about these two doing a normal activity for once, you see them step aside to reveal a fleshy, uh, undulating pile of skin. I'm so sorry. I probably said that wrong. Uh, in the sink. Ew. What is that? It's our skin, silly. I heard that skincare is really important, but Polly doesn't have skin for her own anymore. So I got her this, this little guy to care for. <gasps> I named it Rodriguez. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, but where did Sky even get this eldritch skin abomination? Boo, you asked too many questions. And questions are not part of a uh, good skincare routine, wink. Uh, so you're gonna help us rub lotion onto Rod Rodriguez or, or not? Oh my God. <laughs> Despite not having eyes, the skin is somehow staring at you. Maybe even through you. Nope, nope, you did not sign up for this. Well, actually, you did sign up for this. Moisturizing Rodriguez is in your road trip contract. Ugh. Uh, damn be the day you sign the contract on a dare. It looks like you're stuck rubbing lotion onto this creature. Ew. How long can you stand to do it? Five minutes, an hour, or all night? I... Five minutes. Five minutes is enough. A little... <laughs> so gross you pat some lotion onto the skin but stop after five minutes it feels like slime it's warm and wiggly and you just can't do it why'd you stop don't you see our skin needs more care we had a deal <gasps> the skin starts uh making uh keying sounds like a wounded animal oh no um f this but you gotta take care of uh a green rodriguez needs proper skin care and to go to the dermatologist once a year even if the dermatologist keeps asking uh why you do this to him <laughs> plus rodriguez might eat our toes tonight if it doesn't get proper moisturization <gasps> Now we're all gonna have to sleep with our shoes on. This sucks. Nice going. You retain plus one mind. Oh no, for the limited skin on skin uh, creature contact. Ew, but lose too high for being a bad friend. I'm sorry, but it was too weird for me. It was too weird. <laughs> All right, what do we have now? We can go to the mall where we can looks like gain some stamina or go to the ranch. Um, so let's go to the mall because yeah, our stamina is running a little bit low. Polly, why is there a shopping mall in the middle of the desert? Only God knows, Scott. <laughs> all right, let's see the shopping mall. It's a place where you can sort all, uh, or wait, where you can sort of shop online, but like offline. You can feel young again by reliving, uh, reviving good old ways of having fun at the mall. So we can go to the arcade. We can go to the pizza parlor. Ooh, or we can shoplift. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, well, we're going to go to the pizza parlor because again, we need stamina here. So we need some foodies. Uh, you're looking for the food court when you see your friend Valerie sitting on the center fountain and texting. She looks up at you and smiles. Hey guys, long time no see. What brings you to the mall? Hey Val, we're on a road trip and stopped by to get some lunch. Where's the best place to eat around here? Bad question. All the food here is garbage, but I can take you to the least garbage food they serve. Welcome to Pozo's Pizza. Oh my gosh, this person is terrifying. Where every slice is sliced with love. Uh, are you sure about that? Except we're fresh out of love. So we've been slicing it with the pocket knife that the chef uses to cut cocaine. Oh God. Is Coke on the menu? Oh, Polly is in her best spot ever, if that is so. <laughs> hey, Sadie. I didn't know you still worked here. How have things been? Oh, you know, it's been a lot of this. When are you gonna quit, girl? You should ditch the greasy smock and start hustling with me. I earned twice as much selling junk to my classmates as I did working at Pozo's. Thanks for the offer, but I don't mind it here. We both uh, know the night manager would be useless without me. Suit yourself. Anyways, I'll have a calzone, triple fried with extra anchovies and bell preppers under the cheese and a saucer of milk to drink. Valerie's usual, coming right up. How about you guys? I want Scott's usual, whatever that is. Is the Coke on the menu? <laughs> Polly! 
If Polly's buying Coke, you definitely won't have enough money <gasps> to get food for yourself. Oh no! Don't worry, I know all about that minimum wage life. We're running two price discounts today. Wanna use one of them? Oh my gosh, buy one pizza, pay for two? That's not a deal. Get a free pizza if you attend the opening show of the manager's conceptual theater piece. We have to. Oh my gosh, this face. Oh my goodness. Okay, we have to. We have no choice. We have like no money. Wow, really? Dang, guess you'd do anything for free pizza. I'll let my manager know. Well, you chose this. You're led into an alley behind the mall where several pizza boxes have been stacked up, creating a makeshift stage. Behold, I in the face of greed. I demand money because I don't get paid enough for this. Oh no. The Pozo's manager comes out next. Behold, he screeches, I'm the face of wrath. Tremble before my bloody visage. I don't know if I said that word right. Dude, all you did was smear pizza sauce all over your face. It's even too watery to look like blood. Behold, the manager screams, holding a hand mirror up to Valerie. Here stands the face of consumerism. Get that mirror out of my face. I'm not declawed, <laughs> and I will prove it. <laughs> The next three and a half hours are filled with the manager screaming at the mannequin covered in melted mozzarella about the lie of the, uh, metro uh, I don't, I don't know how to say this word. I'm so sorry. It's mind numbingly boring. There are a few other patrons here, also bored to tears. Uh, you here for the free pizza? You whispered to an old man. I think he was at one point, but now he's asleep with a slice of pizza hanging out of his mouth. Or he's dead. I don't know. If he's dead, do you think he'll miss the pizza slice? You gained plus two stamina from the free pizza you were promised, uh, but was it worth it? <gasps> the minus three high plus? Oh, what am I at now? I'm at three. Oh God, who knows? Oh my gosh. This is so stressful. Okay, we're getting some rest, it looks like. Ooh, cool! Oh my gosh, ugh, finally a place to rest. Even this uh, spherical booty needs to uh, do some sitting after so much shaking. The guide says that there are several pit stops like this one. We should be able to reach one like once a week after visiting four locations. That sounds good. I wonder how long this trip is as a whole. Um, because yeah, this is the first pit stop, I think. That sounds good. Let's go chill between those benches, Scott. Gotcha. As your friends leave, you realize you don't want to rest because you're utterly addicted to making some choices all the time. And this pit stop is no different. You quickly um, assess the many, well, five things you can check out around here. In the final game, each player will fight to get into their preferred pit stop. Mm, okay, that makes sense. At this point in development, we haven't implemented their mechanics yet, but you can still click on all five spots to learn more about them. Go see what they do. Okay, how cool. Ooh, oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. So let's go ahead and see what these pit stops are all about. Okay, so over here, it looks like, can we click into these? We have a few different stops. So we got like the bus stop, we have like an info board, picnic tables, and then this car. So, oh, and uh, a place to buy things. Again, my money's really low now, so let's not. <laughs> Let's not do that part. Um, what? I don't want to do anything that's going to cost me more money. I mean, I need some hype in my life as well. We need to earn money. Maybe we, at the info stand, they'll have like a way we can do that. <laughs> Let's just see what this is. Uh, this is the trip info board. Here you can find info on how to get to the destinations. Reaching a destination is the main oh goal of this road trip. Basically, choosing a destination affects a requirement uh, for the group to fulfill. The main requirement will be getting a specific resource. Oh, to a certain amount. There are six basic destinations, each tied to a different resource, and each has a big, unique ending portrayed. <gasps> Ooh, with unique art. Oh, cool. It later runs. Oh, in later runs, you can eventually even unlock layers for the destinations. Oh my gosh, think of them as additional requirements to activate some twists to the ending and it's art whoa buddy okay interesting this game always has an extra layer for you to get a bit deeper if that's what you want oh very cool okay so we can just literally just learn about these for now so this is the bus stop here you can choose to either pick up a hitchhiker or talk to your current one whoa if you pick one up earlier oh my gosh vera mook's gonna be happy about this one <laughs> If you look for a hitchhiker, you'll find two options. You can pick only one. Keep in mind, every hitchhiker comes with an effect. Um, oh, an effect on your resources. You can also talk to your current hitchhikers. By doing this, uh, you'll have conversation events with them and eventually a deep conversation. Whoa. We'll explain this new mechanic uh, in the benches since this also applies to Polly and Scott there. This basically has three functions. It affects your resources to bring you closer to scoring a date and it provides backstory and intimate moments with the hitchhiker. Keep talking to the hitchhiker if you want to unlock their date ending. Oh, cool. So that's how we do that. There'll be dozens or so hitchhikers. Each of them are waiting for you and ready to share more about them if you're willing to listen. 
Okay, cool. Um, let's see, what is this one? So why would you pick the car? Monster Road Trip will include a tricky new mechanic. For now, let's call them dare points. You will have dares you must fulfill to get those juicy points. Think of them as missions you complete to earn individual points. Even though this game is co-op, these points will decide, oh, who gets a lame ending and who gets to be MVP and get some unique um, kick-ass art. Oh, I see, I see, that does look sweet. <laughs> How much will you be willing to portray or oh, betray your group's uh, collective interest in order to score some dare points for yourself oh my gosh the drama if you're too selfish you may um f up the group goal uh oh and if the group loses everyone loses Ooh, this is gonna be challenging oh my gosh look at look at the, poor scott here oh my god he's deceased <laughs> um let's see but uh focus too much on the group and too little on yourself and you may end up in dead last and getting the lame ending ah let's see and so you can visit the car to collect some juicy dare points Okay, that makes sense. All right, so over here at the benches, what happens? Uh, the benches are where you can go and chill and talk to either Polly or Scott. Okay, talking to the one of them will provide a unique special effect for the next turns. You'll get a conversation event. Uh, they're nice, simple events about different topics. Uh, they reveal snippets of lore and provide intimate moments for you to experience. Okay, so this is where it is really close to like the bus stop um, section. It's just with our own squad here instead of a hitchhiker. And then I guess let's see what this is about. Welcome to the bartending stand Ooh, this is still very early development stage oh so it might change later but the idea is that here you can barter with little trinkets in order to manage your resources a bit oh my gosh cool this could save one of your resources from zeroing on a bad day i would need that right now <laughs> this artwork also noodles is here but i don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> That was adorable. Oh, cute. Okay, so I guess that's uh, the end of the demo and stuff in here, but this is really, really adorable. I can't wait to play more of it. I'll probably go through and uh, check out some of the other options and see if I can at least survive to the first um, pit stop, basically, again. Um, but yeah, this is really, really great. If you guys end up playing the demo as well, let me know how your road trip goes. I hope you survive. Uh, but yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.